Hello, I'm John Morrison, owner of Cornerstone Glassworks. One thing I'd like to share with you today uh, is the idea of liquid resists. Instead of using a vinyl or a rubber resist where you draw and cut out your pattern, uh, we're going to look at a series of uh, liquid product that we either uh, splatter or spray on or paint on, uh, even draw on the glass uh, with a, a liquid that when dry uh, can withstand a little bit of sandblasting. Uh, the real trick to uh, liquid resist is getting something that's tough enough to take the sandblasting but is also easy to remove because one usually contradicts the other. But anyway, let's get started and look at a few samples of this. Alright, these are just a few of the products that you can experiment with. Uh, one here is a tulip brand uh, called Slick. It's a product that you sort of take the tip and draw on fabric and when it dries it's uh, kind of rubbery and that means it'll resist well because it's resilient. Another one here is from Krylon. It's a webbing uh, spray. You may have seen that for a sort of cute decorative little tricks. Uh, another Krylon product is uh, it used to be called Stone Fleck, now it's called Make It Stone. It's just the kind of paint that creates kind of a stone texture and it's real handy for doing uh, some of this liquid resist treatment. Interestingly, I find 3M Super 77 spray adhesive. It's also very useful. Uh, it's kind of a different strategy. But uh, we're going to demonstrate each of these and so we'll get started right now. Okay, the first product we're going to play with is uh, Krylon's Make It Stone. I don't know if you can pick up on this or not, but the texture that's on the cap is basically the texture that's going to be thrown onto this glass. First, I'm going to clean the glass. Because naturally, we want it to stick as well as it can. Okay. Now you can probably see on the white paper here kind of what this looks like. Doesn't look like that much. But spray it on the glass. I usually do a couple of passes. By the way, this product, the nozzles get gummed up real easy and frequently the nature of the product in the can. So anyway, now we've got some of this stuff on the glass. Let's see if we can get a little closer and understand what we're looking at. So anyway, that's uh, the stone paint and we're going to let that dry and then we'll take it in the booth and sandblast it. Okay, the next thing we're going to shoot with is the Krylon webbing. And I've seen this stuff around for years. I guess it's going to stay around. But uh, let's just put a quick wipe on the glass. Dry it. Now, on the paper here, you can see what you got. Now, the nice thing about this is you can make it directional. Uh, or you can make it omnidirectional, you can make it dense or sparse, you have a lot of control. Now, this is not the most durable paint in the world, but it'll hold up for the most part uh, if you go in gentle and you work fast, um, turn pressure down a little bit, and most of that webbing pattern will remain. But some of it will go away. Okay, we did the stone fleck and we did the webbing. This time we're going to do a combination of the two. Uh, it doesn't really require a demonstration, but since I've got scrap glass about and time, I'm going to do it. So I like to put on the webbing first when combining the two. It 
you've got a pattern I kind of like. And grab the flex stone. There we go. And that about empties up that can. So we're going to let this dry. Okay, now we're going to use the uh, Super 77 spray adhesive uh, as a, a treatment. Now, this is a slightly different strategy. What I'm going to do is spray on a couple of layers of the glue and let it dry. Essentially, it'll be completely covered in glue. But, as I take it in the booth and start to sandblast it and just bang on it until it starts to erode, that creates a particular pattern. And because you can uh, control it somewhat by applying more glue or less glue, it's just another texture in your arsenal. And again, these are things where you're not really working for it. You're not drawing and cutting. Okay, here we go. little more. Okay, this will take longer to dry than the others, but uh, once it's, uh, you know, more or less bone dry, then it's ready to go uh, banging on in the boot. Okay, we start off here with the graphic that I chose, because I thought it would just be a, a good quick example of this technique. And we've got our piece of glass, and we're going to position over the drawing. And we're going to tape it down so it doesn't move. That way, if I shift the glass over the paper drawing, I don't have to kind of realign it. I just know it's going to stay in place. Okay. So anyway. So when you start using this material, all you got to do is doodle a little bit on some paper and you'll figure out real quick how it's going to behave and uh, how you need to use it. Okay, now you've got to be real careful not to drag your hand across what you've already done. Otherwise, you'll mess it up. Okay, now we have drawn the drawing on with the Tulip Brand Slick paint that's used for fabric, but we're using it on glass. 
Now, uh, when you do a lot of thin lines, sometimes it'll dry in about 20, 30 minutes, but we've gorped on quite a bit of paint here and there, so we're gonna give it a couple of hours to dry, and then we'll sandblast it.
Okay, these are all blasted and we're going to start stripping them one by one so we can see what it looks like finished. So anyway, this comes off real easy. Let me tell you that's nice because in the early days of experimentation, everything I came up with was very difficult to remove, which made it a lot of work. Now I change out razor blades a lot because razor blades are cheap and art glass is expensive, plus your time. So. Actually, I didn't do a very thorough job of that, but you get the idea. It's not solid frosted here and here, but every place that is solid frosted, you get the little clear flex. Now that's the flex stone treatment. And this is the one with the pseudo web I, I, I think of it more as like marble veining. That's what it looks like to me. And it comes off pretty easy most of the time, but it is fighting me right now. As the can gets older, this paint will almost fall off as you're hitting it with the razor blade. Now, you get an idea of what that looks like. Now, on this sample, I just combined the two. The flat stone and the web paint. Here we have a combination of the two. This next one where we used the spray adhesive, this is going to be much more work to remove. It's more tenacious, it is adhesive after all, and you have to push into it to get it to turn loose. Actually, this is friendlier than it usually is. So I like that. Yes, usually this is a lot more work. Of course, I usually put the glue down heavier. Now you can see the texture that was created just by uh, putting something on the glass and then tearing it up, eroding it. Sometimes you can get some really great textures that way and you can experiment with anything, just about anything. Even vinyl, put, some, put a layer of vinyl down and then go in and, and tear it up, see what you get. Okay, this is the drawing that we did using the Tulip brand fabric paint. And generally, it tends to come loose pretty easily. But like everything else, it varies depending on humidity, age of the product. This tends to lend itself to things that are supposed to look hand-drawn versus uh, tight geometric things. Obviously, the glue, or, or the paint rather, is not going to uh, uh, act like a drafting tool or anything like that. Now, that was pretty easy.
and now you see from the front, which is typically how we look at this, you've got a drawing. How easy would it be to sit down and freehand a bunch of drawings, even portraits, on glass, take it in the booth, frost it, and then strip it, and you've got essentially a drawing. Your clear lines essentially are the black lines because whatever's behind it is going to be darker than the white etching. So that's one reason I like to use the black color paint better than the white because then while I'm drawing it looks more like what it's ultimately going to be. But anyway, we'll take a look at these on the light box and see what it looks like. Okay, here we're looking close up at the uh, Flexstone paint treatment on the light box. Now typically when I perform this uh, technique the flex are larger. This can, uh, I guess being towards the end of its age, uh, didn't hold up so well. The flex were smaller, uh, they uh, eroded in sort of an irregular fashion, but this at least gives you the idea of what can be done. Okay, now this is uh, the web paint, or as I like to refer to it, the marble veining texture. Uh, it's very effective. It could be used in a room in place of just a solid frost uh, in a room where there's a lot of stone. Nice compliment. All right. Now this is uh, the sample where we combined the uh, fleck paint with the webbing paint. Okay, I was so unhappy with that uh, fleck paint pattern sample that I made for you that I decided to photograph this piece here that I did earlier and let you see a better example. There's the combination of the two. So one lesson learned from that is when you start to do a job, it's probably a good idea to do your own test sample so that you have an idea how the age of the paint in your container is going to perform on an actual job because I really hadn't seen it perform that poorly before. So anyway real close up. Hope that helps clear things up a little bit. Okay, now this sample is uh, the one we use the Super 77 spray adhesive on. As you can see, that is not just etched but also slightly dimensional, some slight carving, and it is a very effective technique for doing some really cool organic texture. Okay, now here's the sample of the freehand drawing we did using the Tulip brand fabric paint. And you can imagine what can be done with that. Okay, there you have it. Just uh, the tip of the iceberg of uh, strategies using uh, liquid product, latex paint, uh, just about anything, glue guns, uh, to create a resist pattern uh, and the more things you try the more unique options you'll discover for creating textures and applying textures in your work. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please write. I will respond. <laughs> 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 Yeah.